We undertook this project looking at success stories in conservation of threatened species around the country. And we brought together the project leaders from a whole range of different groups, um, birds, mammals, plants, fish. They came together in a workshop and they told their stories and then we brought them together in a book because we feel it's really important that these success stories are told to policymakers, to the general public. We hear so much bad news about conservation. And it's not all bad news at all. There are people doing very good things. There's very clever science and terrific community support for these actions. And they're succeeding. We're getting more of some of these rare things. And we might be able to take some of them, some of them off the list. So we looked at about 25 different case studies. And there were I know, whole islands that were, where they're taken off the predators. There were orchids. There were whales. There were a whole huge variety. We chose them for variety. And then we looked at the factors that they had in common to try and tease out some lessons that could be learned for, for future recovery actions. And there were things like the leadership. Many of them had people who dedicated their whole career to particular threatened species or projects. So it's really important to have examples for people to follow, you know, concrete examples. And I was lucky enough to be involved with one some years ago now, uh, which is a glossy black cockatoo on Kangaroo Island. It's a lovely big black cockatoo with red panels in the tail. And when I first started, there were just 150 left. They were getting five young a year. It was all very gloomy. But we managed to find out that the young and the eggs were being taken by brush-tailed possums. And when we protected the nests, we were able to keep the possums out, and immediately the, the breeding success doubled. We were able to support that further by putting up nest boxes. And they only have one young a year, and they feed on a single source of food, so they're very specialised, but numbers have kept on going up year after year because community people have got involved in protecting nests, planting trees for them. Uh, they, they became a symbol of, of the island and of, of success in nature conservation. And it won't be long before we can get them, get them off the list if they keep on improving. Uh, there has to be continued support for them, and that's the hard thing. When they become more common, it's harder to retain the support and then they can slip back again. But if that can be retained, then that should be a very positive story for, for that part of the world and for Australia as a whole. One of the nice things about this is that we've had queries since from around the world and, and in Australia is, that was a great model, can we do more of it? There's more stories we want to tell. I and mean, this is something we think we can emulate in, in different parts of the world to, to encourage people to get involved.